what do you foresee as developments in the crypto or blockchain space, or what are you watching closely? Well, I think it's it's funny because people get so caught up in these kind of bull and bear markets and, and watching these coins and saying like, oh, it's crazy, it's down 20%, it's up 20%. And I think if you, I try not to get caught up in the weeds there and just zoom out even further, because I think once you do that, the lines start to smooth out a bit and you understand that we're in the very early kind of first innings of this entire rewriting of the financial stack. And so, you know, that's part of the reason why I created the podcast to cover these things is because there's just so much going on right now. Yeah. We need to bring the average consumer up to speed so they know how to get into this stuff early before it's, uh, you know, on paypal.com, which is what Bitcoin and Ethereum are now, you know? At modern underscore fi. Oh, that's my, you my Twitter. Yeah, just modern, modern dot finance. Modern finance. Modern dot finance. Modern finance podcast. Check it out, folks. On the tweets, on the Twitters, it's at modern underscore fi. All right, so you're tracking that. You're saying people get caught up in the micro cycles. That's right, and they think it's over. So the fair weather speculators are going to get their faces ripped off and panic and then end up in a bad position. It's because they're always buying at the highs and selling at the lows. You know, I mean, that's a very common yeah. thing here. And, and I mean, Tim, you know this, man. You bought in right when everything crashed or just before it crashed. And you got decimated did, but, for about four, <laughs> three years. Yeah, I did. I did. Yes, I did. I, I, I came in in probably, what was it, mid-2017, something like that, and promptly got my face ripped off. <laughs> right. But you were smart. You didn't do anything. You just sat there. I was and- just like, there, there isn't a compelling, based on the thesis that I had, I mean, which is a fancy way of saying what I hoped would happen in the future, based on a couple of assumptions, there was no real reason to sell. Right. It was, uh, there are these really jagged, acute short term moves. But if I actually had high conviction in the assumptions that led me to buy in the first place, it would be hypocritical and self defeating to sell at that point. So I didn't sell. Yeah. Yeah. And that was great because that ended up, it's probably what, up at least 5X or more since, since all of that happened. It's up a bit. It's up a bit. Yeah. I mean, it's not up as much as it was, I guess, end of April beginning may but that's okay that's okay i mean i think there are just these sort of hype and deflation cycles that you see in everything yeah right and 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 my biggest regrets in all of investing are actually the times that i sold prematurely Mm -hmm. it's not having invested in things it is in in other words it's not it's not having missed opportunities to invest it's having not uh, held the things I invested in for a longer period of time. Yeah, Shopify. <clears throat> Sorry. Shopify. Shopify was a huge one. I mean, that was <laughs> my biggest misfire of all time was, but at the time that represented in absolute dollars, a really significant win for me Yeah, right, to try to get to the point where I didn't have to be preoccupied with money. So it made sense, right? Like the logic of selling that actually made sense. Do I regret it? Yes. A better example would be in 2008 when I had one stock that I put a bunch of my, like a very double digit percentage of my net worth into. Can you guess what it was? And I put it in maybe in 2005. Uh, WordPress? No, no. Although I am an advisor to WordPress and I'm a, and a, or rather to Automatic and I'm a big fan. Trying but, to think of what you would have bought back then. Maybe Amazon? Yeah, I bought Amazon in like 2005 or something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit later. I'm taking a look right now. So wait, you regret that? No, you don't regret that. Obviously, that's been... I regret selling Oh, you it. sold I it like sold three years later. It. I sold it when the subprime crisis landed and everything was just going through the floor. Mm-hmm. And... Boy, oh boy, that was a mistake. Should have held on to it. And I didn't have clear rules for myself then. Right. It was, I, I had rules for buying, but not rules for holding or selling. Mm-hmm. And I think people, at least I get my, I've gotten myself into a lot of trouble by having rules for buying, which I, I sort of intuitively have a pretty good feeling for. I think you have an even better feeling for it, honestly. You're just, that's absolutely one of your mutant powers. But then uh, how long to hold, when to sell, having rules for that in advance is something that I have historically not been 
as good at. And that has been a big problem, uh, certainly with Amazon as, as sort of the, the textbook example of that, you know, selling 2008 on a panic. And now it's, who knows, five or 10 X? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Uh, but yes, all right. So coming back to blockchain or crypto, I mean, there's sort of like one, the, the latter is sort of contained within the former. What else are you paying close attention to? So you, uh, of course you're observing the sort of mass behavior, right? And right. misbehavior. What else are you watching? Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of crypto investing at True Ventures where I'm a partner over at there. At True Ventures. Yeah, so yeah. we've probably deployed, I'd say 50 million or so, so far this year in just in crypto related yeah. deals. So that's a, a pretty decent chunk of our fund. So it's something that we track very closely. And I would say the the problem for the average consumer is that there's just a lot of garbage in there. There's just a lot of crap. Yeah. So, you know, I would say that <laughs> unless you're educated and you are really deep in the space and you're listening to all the podcasts and you're, you know, reading all the different coin desk every morning and if you're at that level, then you can probably go out there and say, if you feel like it, you can go out and say, I, I believe I see where the momentum is taking things. And so that's kind of what I do as a profession. Now, I don't recommend that people do that, you know, with their everyday, just random pick of a doggy coin. Cause like all of the, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hype around these different, you know, meme coins that are appearing and, those come down crashing as fast as they go up. So we have a problem similar to NFTs where anyone can spin up a new coin, which is a few modifications to some of the open source software that's out there, make a meme around it, pump it, and then dump it, and people get burned. Kev Kev coin. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tim Tim. <laughs> the K. Yeah, we could do... We could do Tim Tim tokens. Tim Tim tokens. Tim Tim tokens and Kev Kev coin. <laughs> I mean, we could, like, literally, I within an hour, we could launch a new Tim Tim uh, token, and, and it would be live. <laughs> and then we could put some liquidity on Uniswap, we could get it trading, we get people... I mean, that happens every single day. Yeah. So I, I it's really frustrating... And, you know, it's, it's, it, but it is what it is. It's an unregulated market. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's super exciting. There's a lot of innovation happening, a lot of really high quality projects, but a lot of, of crap to, you know, it's buyer beware. So you just have to be careful on, on, on how you evaluate these different opportunities and definitely do not buy into the memes that are out there. Like it's just that those are, those are silly. And, um, I'm not saying that one of them isn't going to eventually, because there's this like fine line between community support and that turns into something real and a meme, right? And uh, something that's yeah. being used to kind of pump and dump. And so, so would you would you consider Dogecoin a meme coin? It started off as a meme coin, and I think that there are attributes before, of it that I really like. Before the big EM started tweeting about, yeah, exactly. The Doge. Elon Elon started <laughs> pumping up the Doge. <laughs> Well, here's the deal with Doge. Like, even the I, I knew the founder really well. Uh, I had him on my podcast seven years ago or whatever it was, and we talked about Dogecoin, and it was a joke to initially. It was just like a fun like he set the supply super high. Everybody was using it to tip using these little bots on Reddit, and you know I had literally millions and millions and millions of Dogecoin because they were worthless. <laughs> And I was tipping out, you know, 10,000 at a time here, 5,000 over here. Like, it was just like, we all did it. It was just fun, right? Yeah. And it was just kind of like a way, like a, a tip of the hat to someone. Like, oh, monopoly money. Yeah, it was exactly. monopoly money. Monopoly money. So that has now evolved into, it had a really strong community back then. It died down for a few years. And then the community came back. And then Elon jumped on top of it. But it's still lacking a few things like the underlying developers that are working on it. Now this could be changing. And I've, I've heard that they're seriously considering refactoring the code base, but it was just a dead project that had minor bug fixes applied to it. So there was no real outside of it being a quote unquote meme coin and being hilarious and watching it go up in price. The, the technology stack that it was written on wasn't being well it was being maintained just so that it didn't break. There was no innovation happening there. And so that is not the future of currency. The, the, like, the, the future like currency that is going to, to, to really be a real true utility has to have an active development community behind it, supporting it and evolving it over time. And so that is happening on a handful of other projects, not so much on Doge, but there is so much interest in Doge now, and it is being listed on a bunch of, of the major exchanges again 
I could see it wouldn't be crazy uh, if you said, hey, Kevin, guess what? Five years from now, they now have, you know, 5,000 active developers doing all these really funky, weird things on Doge. I'd be like, well, that makes sense because it had it had the community drive a lot of that, you know, but mm. but they're the, the outside of Doge there. They call them like the doggy coins. There are a bunch of other doggy style coins that are just like basically doggy style. well i'm sorry tim like <laughs> they're just they're similar they're similar doggy coins i'm sorry that your <laughs> mind went there but, but they're they're, oh, they're dude, doggy put that themed. on me put that on me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're, they're doggy themed coins that are just like literally just out there for to get people excited the prices go up the whales sell and you know it's it ends in tears and then ends in tears yeah